I'll take care of this, Jones said, sounding almost pleased at the prospect. She touched Flamel's sleeve and nodded to where the warrior was still wrapped in Needhulk's claws. Get Scatatch! The monster was now less than six feet from the edge of the quay and edging ever closer to the safety of the water. The tiny Frenchwoman grabbed her sword and leapt out of the car. More human eye with swords! The Desir spat, blade falling toward the woman. Not just any human eye, Jones said, easily turning the weapon aside, her own sword then flickering out to clink against the remains of the rusted mail on the Desir's shoulders. I am Joan of Arc. The longsword in her hands twirled and twisted, creating a spinning wheel of steel that drove the Desir back with the ferocity of its attack. I am the maid of Orléans. Sophie and Nicholas moved cautiously toward Needhog. Sophie noted that its entire tail was coated with heavy black stone, which had now started to creep up its back and down its hind legs. The weight of the stone tail anchored the creature to the ground, and Sophie saw its huge muscles bunching and rippling as it tugged itself toward the water. She could see where its claws and dragon tail left deep indentations in the pavement. Sophie! Flamel shouted. I need some help! But Josh! She began, distracted. Josh is gone! He snapped. He swooped in to snatch Clarent off the ground, hissing in surprise at the heat of the weapon. Darting forward, he slapped at Needhog with the sword. The blade bounced harmlessly off the stone sheathed skin. Sophie, help me free Scotty and then we'll go after Josh. Use your powers. The alchemist hacked at Needhog again, but without any effect. His worst fears had been realized. D had gotten his hands on Josh. And Josh had the last two pages of the codex. Nicholas looked over his shoulder. Sophie was still standing, looking frightened and completely bemused. Sophie, help me! Sophie obediently raised her hands, pressed her thumb against her tattoo, and tried to call on her fire magic. Nothing happened. She couldn't concentrate. She was too worried for her brother. What was he doing? Why had he gone with Dean Machiavelli? It didn't look as though it had forced him to. He had been driving them. Sophie, Nicholas called. But she knew he had been in danger. Real, terrible danger. She had felt the emotion deep within her, recognized her for what it was. Whenever Josh was in trouble, she knew. When he had nearly drowned off Pakalala Beach in Kauai, he had, she had woken up breathless and gasping. When he had broken his ribs on a football field in Pittsburgh, she had distinctly felt the sharp pain in her left side, felt the sting of every breath she took. Sophie! What had happened? One moment he was in mortal danger, and the next... Sophie! Flamel snarled. What? She snapped, turning on the alchemist. She felt a quick surge of anger. Josh was right. He had been right on along. This was the alchemist's fault. Sophie, he said much more gently. I need you to help me. I can't do this on my own. Sophie turned to look at the alchemist. He was crouched on the ground, cool green vapor puddling around him. A thick emerald green cord of smoke wrapped around one of Needhawk's huge legs and disappeared deep into the earth, where it looked as if Flamello had attempted to trap it. Another rope of smoke, thinner, less substantial than the first, was loosely wrapped around one of the creature's hind legs. Needhog inched forward and the green cord snapped and dissolved in the air. Another few steps and it would carry Scatthatch, her friend, into the river. Sophie wasn't going to let that happen. Her fear and anger lent her focus. When she pressed her tattoo, flames popped a light on each finger. She splashed silver fire across Needhog's back, but it had no effect. Then she peppered the monster with tiny fiery hailstones, but it didn't even seem to notice. It continued to edge nearer toward the water. Fire didn't work, so she tried air. But the miniature tornado she threw bounced harmlessly off the creature. Scouring the witch's memory, she tried a trick Hecate had used against the Mongol horde. She whipped up a sharp wind that drove steam, grit, and dirt into Needhog's eyes. The creature merely blinked, and a second protective eyelid slid down over its huge eye. Nothing's working! She screamed as the monster dragged Scatty ever closer to the edge. Nothing's working! The Desir's sword slashed out. Joan ducked and the heavy bait whistled over her head and sliced into the citrogen, turning the windshield into white powder, popping off the tiny windshield wipers. Joan was furious. She loved her 2CV Charleston. Frances had wanted to buy her a new car for her birthday in January. He'd given her a pile of glossy car catalogs and told her to pick one. 
She pushed the catalogs aside and told him she'd always wanted a little classic French car. He had searched all over Europe for the perfect model, then spent a small fortune having it restored to its original pristine condition. When he presented it to her, it had been wrapped in three thick ribbons of blue, white, and red. Another slash from the Desir scored a rent in the hood of the car, and then another cut off the small round headlight that perched over the right front wheel arch like an eye. The light bounced away and shattered. Do you know? Joan asked, her huge eyes dark with fury, renewing her attack on the Desir, every word matched by a hammer blow from her sword. How difficult it is to find original parts for this car! The Desir fell back, desperately trying to defend herself from Joan's whirling blade, pieces of her rotting chainmail flying away as the small Frenchwoman's sword struck closer and closer. She kept trying different fighting styles to defend herself, but nothing was effective against the ferocious onslaught. You will notice, Joan continued, pushing the warrior back toward the river, that I have no fighting style. That is because I trained by the greatest warrior of all. I was trained by Skatach the Shadow. You may defeat me, the Desir said grimly, but my sisters will avenge my death. Your sisters, Joan said, with a final savage cut that snapped the Desir's blade in two. Would they be the two Valkyries currently frozen into the per own personal iceberg? The Desir faltered, swaying on the edge of the wall along the river. Impossible, we are undefeatable. Everyone can be defeated. The flat of Joan's blade clanged against the Desir's helmet, stunning her. Then Joan darted forward, her shoulder catching the swaying Desir in the chest, knocking her backward into the Seine. Only ideas are immortal, she whispered. Still clutching the broken remains of her sword, the Valkyrie disappeared into the murky river in a huge splash that drenched Joan from head to toe. Sophie was puzzled. Her magic had failed against Needhog. How had Josh? He had no powers. The sword. He had the sword. Sophie snatched Clarent from Flamel's hand, and instantly her aura snapped to life, sparking, crackling, long streamers of icy light spinning around her body. She felt a rush of emotions, a swirling mess of thoughts, ugly thoughts, dark thoughts, the memories and emotions of those men and women who had carried the sword in ages past. She was about to fling the weapon away in disgust, but she knew it was probably Scatty's only chance. Needhog's tail was wounded, so Josh must have cut it there. But she had seen the alchemist hack at the tough hide with no result. Unless... Racing up to the monster, she plunged the weapon point first into its shoulder. The effect was immediate. Red-black fire burned along the length of the blade, and the monster's skin immediately started to harden. Sophie's aura blazed brighter than ever been before and instantly her brain was filled with impossible visions and incredible memories. Then her aura overloaded and winked out an explosion that picked her up and sent her sailing through the air. She managed to scream once before she came crashing down on the canvas roof of Joan's Citroen, which slowly and gently ripped along its seams and deposited her neatly in the front passenger seat. Needhawk spasmed, great claws opening as its flesh hardened. Joan of Arc darted through the monster's legs, grabbed Scatty around the waist, and jerked her free, oblivious to the creature's huge feet stamping inches from her head. Needhog bellowed, a sound that set house alarms clanging across the city. Every car alarm in the parking lot burst to life. The beast attempted to turn its head, to follow Joan as he, she dragged Scatty away, but its ancient flesh was solidified into thick black stone. Its mouth opened, revealing its dagger-like teeth. Abruptly, a huge section of the quayside cracked, rock pulverized to death, crumpling the powder beneath the creature's weight. Needhog tilted forward and crashed down through the moored tourist boat, snapping it in two, disappearing into the Seine in an enormous explosion of water that sent a huge wave racing down the river. Lying on the quayside, close to the water's edge, soaked through, Skatach came slowly, groggily awake. I haven't felt this bad in centuries. She murmured, attempting but failing to sit up. Joan eased her into a sitting position and held her tightly. The last thing I remember. Scatty's green eyes snapped open. Needhog! Josh! He tried to save you, Flamel said, limping up to Scatty and Joan. He snatched Clarent from the quayside. 
He stabbed Needhog, slowed it down long enough for us to get here. Then Joan fought the Desir for you. We all fought her, Joan said. She put her arm around Sophie, who had staggered from the wrecked car, bruised and battered, with a long scrape along her forearm, but otherwise unharmed. Sophie finally defeated Needhog. The warrior slowly got to her feet, turning her head from side to side, working her stiff neck muscles. And Josh? She asked, looking around. Her eyes went wide in alarm. Where's Josh? Dee and Machiavelli have them, Flamel said, his face gray with exhaustion. We're not sure how. We have to go after them now, Sophie said urgently. The car's not in good shape. They cannot have gotten far, Flamel said. He turned to look at the Citroen. I'm afraid yours has taken a battering as well. And I did so love that car, Joan murmured. Let's get out of here, Scotty said decisively. We're about to be inundated with police. And then, like a shark erupting from the waves, Dagon exploded out of the same. Rearing up more fish now than man, gills open on his long neck, round eyes bulging. He wrapped webbed claws around Scatthatch and dragged her backward into the river. Finally, Shadow. Finally. They disappeared into the water with barely a splash and didn't reappear.